So we got this Chevy Impala LT. As you can see, uh, front end collision, obviously. Hello and well and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I am Stack Six One Two, and this is Roaches to Ranches, where it's all about progress. Um, yeah. Before I start out, uh, make sure you follow me on Instagram. Let me open up my Instagram. Uh, Grand Cardone right here. Love that dude, man. But yeah, man, yo, follow me on uh, my Instagram, Roaches to Ranches, Stack Six One Two. You know what, man? We got this uh, this caddy that we got uh when was it on friday yeah friday so two days ago um yeah i got that up i'm posting pictures pretty regularly um yeah man so you know y'all follow me like my videos all that good stuff um now what let's go to copart real quick so i want to talk to you about some stuff man um so first of all i think like sometime last week I bid on this Mini Cooper. Yeah, I bid on this Mini Cooper. Run and drive vehicle. Um, apparently it's not donated. Let me just make sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's not donated, but... Um, yeah, but I mean, this thing, it looked great, man. I didn't go look I didn't go look at this thing so I really wasn't that that into getting it you know but it looked pretty cool you know a mini Cooper I'm pretty sure that would be a nice little fun car to drive 123,000 miles minor dents and scratches um but yeah it's, it's a good car but I didn't win it obviously because usually I'm not really too into um getting cars that I haven't looked at in person so I only just bid it to 1100 it's actually still for sale it went back to auction because no one bought it i think that i mean i think like right now it has like a buy it now for like 3300 or something like that but i don't know how much that car is worth so i mean i, didn't, I really wasn't looking into getting it but what i want to talk about i want to start this new series called is it worth it is it worth it is going to be cars where you know i'm trying to i'm thinking about cars that I'm considering buying and I just want to talk to you about my thought process about whether or not a, a vehicle is worth it so right now I'm going to show you all this buy it now 2010 Chevy Impala LT so um as I told you before uh I'm not this is at my local coal part yard which is why I'm blacking out everything it's gonna I'm not I'm really not trying to blow my location really because that's really not important i'm just trying to show you all the cars um but yeah man so we got this chevy impala lt as you can see uh front end collision obviously um now let me tell you all my my thought process so usually um now when i'm buying cars i have guidelines okay uh because my state the titles like the um the title is uh very slow in coming you're not able to expedite the titles anymore well in my state so the problem is you have to you pretty much have to wait like four to five months you know four months to you until you get the title so yeah what i'm doing now is i'm getting more valuable cars instead of you know old civics like i can and yeah you know what i mean so yeah, I mean, back before, I was buying and selling old Civics like like nothing, man. Like, I mean, I was buying and selling like every couple weeks, you know. But you can't do that anymore, so... Me, what I'm trying to do is just buy cars that I will actually be willing to drive around, you know. Those old Civics, I really didn't like driving them. They, they, drive, they drove like hell on the highway. But, yeah, man. So anyway, my guidelines now. Usually, I like cars, you know, less than less than 130,000 miles and it has to be a 2005 or newer no older than that that's kind of, those are my guidelines so as you can see here um 
this 2010 Chevy Impala LT. <clears throat> it's a pretty clean car, 88,000 miles. So that's really what stood out to me. Um, yeah, less than a hundred thousand. That's I mean that's like preferred. You know what I mean? So it has a clean title. That's also a plus. I don't buy salvage title vehicles. I'm pretty sure I've I mentioned that multiple times already. I do not buy salvage title vehicles, but so as you can see here, you would have to go look at this car in person. As always, like I only look at cars in person to determine whether or not I can buy it and it'll be economically feasible for me to fix it. So, as you can see here, it's definitely going to need a new hood, new, um, new front bumper cover. There's no way you can salvage that. Um, so obviously, I'm going to have to go look at the car in person to determine whether or not I would need a new radiator core support. Which, if that's busted, that, that means I would need to also get a new radiator and, yeah, also a new AC condenser because that would be busted also. But as far as I can look, I simply cannot tell through what I'm looking at right here whether or not it's that has not been compromised. So, yeah. Hood, bumper cover. Um... Possibly a front crash bar, damn. Yeah, I don't, I don't even know. Um, it may or may not be compromised, as I said. So as you can see, going around in the pictures, it's gonna need a new airbag for sure. New uh, steering wheel airbag. The passenger side airbag has not been compromised, which is kinda weird. I mean, compromised. It hasn't been uh, deployed, which I find kinda funny because the impact yeah it seems oh no yeah it seems as though the impact was on the driver's side so yeah i guess um anyway what is that i think that's a i think that is a leather interior so that's that's nice it is an lt uh v6 88,000 miles and here's the front i like looking at these front photos because they they show a good picture of how the i mean it shows a good it gives you an idea of how the geometry is on the vehicle you know the straightforward picture will show you whether you know there's anything sketchy going on with the uh frame rails you don't want to you don't want to see cars with uh bent frame rails so you know if you if you see this head-on picture and the you know one of the rails is sticking out that means the frame is bent so you know if the car is is worth it then you can fix it and you can go about fixing it but you just have to keep that in mind if you're not able to go look at the car in person now for a car this damaged as you can see i would definitely have to go see it in person there's no way i would look i would have to um find some way to measure the um the frame rails to make sure nothing is bent because uh the car i bought from copart recently this car um, that I'm rebuilding right now is actually almost done. I just need to get the, the front core support because the thing is I did not realize that was bent at the when I was looking at the car. There was just no way I could tell because it was just slightly off. So it was just ever so slightly off that there was no way I could notice. It wasn't until I put the hood on and the, uh, you know, the, the, the place where the fender mounts to that frame that rail was sticking out like three centimeters so you could see the damn engine bay through the gap you know it was pretty bad so yeah also um it's so this car is also going to need two new headlights unless the headlights are in the trunk i had a car i owned a, a civic one time where like the whole front end was disassembled and everything was in the trunk i thought i didn't even know that i didn't even know that but so i got lucky with that there yeah. and um yeah i like the wheels on this thing flex fuel um so yeah this is a minimum bid vehicle also i tend to like to stick to stick to 
pure sale vehicles or buy it nows if there's a really cheap one i'll just get a buy it now car so yeah um so anyway you need to tally up i have i don't have the uh i don't have the the calculation of how much a new hood new bumper cover you know grill headlights all that would cost new airbag also uh, I would have to go look on eBay and then I would have to compare that to car-part.com I don't know if you guys know about that I'm pretty sure everyone knows about car-part.com um, it's a nice place where you can just it you can go look on it's a database that compiles all the salvage yards in your area and then um, it will search up where you can find used parts and the OEM so it's good so you know or what you could do for a car this new you know getting getting used parts that have the paint already matched might may or may not be you know pretty expensive so also make sure that it would not be cheaper to simply buy an aftermarket part and paint it you know as far as body panels go you can always you know yeah so i bought a hood for this car I'm rebuilding I, I bought a hood on ebay um and i w took it to mako to get it repainted yeah that was not the right decision for me at all because i had to that the hood ended up costing me about 300 no excuse me 540 dollars because you know it cost me 290 two dollars to get it from ebay shipped to my house and then another 250 at <clears throat> at mako i should have only told them to paint the top they painted both sides so that costed me quite a bit but anyway so this car now also now finally uh when you look at this car and you compile like a list of all the new parts it's going to need and you tally up the cost you search around see how much you can get those parts for and um, tally it up look on to your local Craigslist um, if you're uh, if you're a private party seller buyer and seller uh, look at your local Craigslist see how much these cars go for on Craigslist at my local Craigslist which is the only medium where I can really sell my cars I wouldn't I don't really sell my cars on eBay I never sold a car on eBay I'm not interested in that this car is worth about $4,700 to $5,000 locally to me. So you see this thing right here that says estimated retail value, $8,727. That's BS, okay? This Chevy Impala LT is not worth $8,000, almost $9,000. Trust me, it's not worth that much. If you're a dealer and you have a dealership, they may sell it for that much you know especially with the mileage it's worth something completely fixed but as a private party seller um i would probably i would probably post this for 5200 i would probably post it for maybe 5000 honestly 5000 to 5200 and i'd probably get and yeah someone would probably negotiate me down to 48 49 47 you know so yeah so this is a pretty nice car fully fixed i'm just not exactly sure um if if it would be worth it you know what i mean so thus the name of this series is it worth it you don't want to get a car just because you can get it for cheap and then after you rebuild it if the car is worth you know five thousand dollars you don't want to buy a car for actually this car right here that has a buy it now this car has a buy it now for 1300 which means after fees and transportation because there's no way i'm going to be able to drive this car out of here as you can see in, in the condition i would have to say two thousand dollars to have it on my driveway after all that um you don't want to end up spend, spending like $3,000 in parts, you know what I mean? I don't think this car would cost about $3,000 to fix, but it will cost quite a bit. I'm pretty sure you could fix this thing for another 
two grand maybe yeah maybe if you're blessed man and that's that's given that's assuming that the frame is not bent if the frame is bent then there's no way i'm gonna buy this car it would be it would be better if you just part it out um if the frame is bent because i mean if if the frame is bent you're talking another fifteen hundred dollars to bend the frame back you know and that's not including the time for cutting out the spot welds and you know welding in a new core support and all that stuff so keep that all into consideration when you're buying a copart car don't just look at the body panels and say oh it just needs a new hood and bumper cover and some headlights and grill and booyah like no it's it's not that easy you know pay attention airbags deployed the seat belt is also locked up keep that in mind so yeah, the, as you can see here, the seat belt is slagged, so you know, there's some slag in it, so yeah, you're gonna need to replace that, it's locked up. I don't know about the passenger seat belts and things like that. But yeah, man. So honestly, I'm, I'm really not, I'm honestly not really leaning towards buying this car just because I mean, it is fixable, but I mean, I'm not sure if it would really be worth it. It does have a clean title that always counts. So I only buy clean title vehicles. I say that all the time, but yeah, man, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's an Impala, you know, it's a nice Impala. I've never owned an Impala like these newer ones, um, but yeah, it's a cool car. Yeah, honestly, I'm really not looking. I'm, I'm, yeah, I wouldn't really look to buy this car. I would have to go look in person to see, it, make sure the frame rails aren't bent, and the core support does not need to be replaced. Cause if I need to start drilling out spot welds and things like that, that it would not be worth it. Trust me. So, anyway, yeah. So I, I don't wanna, I don't wanna have a car that would say, if it's only worth like have a car that's worth forty eight hundred and be 4500 into it by the time it's ready to sell because then there's really no point i'll only make like 300 dollars on the car which was kind of stupid so also keep in mind um if the radiator needs to be replaced ac condenser you have to count in the cost of fluids also so if you replace the radiator you have to drain the fluid and put new fluid in so and also same thing with the AC, you gotta buy some new refrigerant or whatever it's called. And yeah. But yeah, I mean if I had a shop and I had a bunch of employees, I might just buy this thing and part it out, but I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, that's all I have to say. Um So is this car worth it? Leave it in the comments, man. Let me know your opinion. But anyway, um, as always, that's all. Y'all stay strong, stay healthy, and stay inspired. I'm out. Peace.